My name's Kayla Rohde, and I'm here with Frank Rose, a contributing editor at Wired and the author of The Art of Immersion. For those who haven't read The Art of Immersion, what sorts of questions were you trying to tackle when you wrote it? Uh, so The Art of Immersion is basically a book about how the internet is changing storytelling. And as I was working on it, I came to realize that every time a new communications medium comes along, it takes people 25 or 30 years to figure out what to do with it, to develop a sort of grammar of storytelling that's appropriate. And, you know, with cinema, the motion picture camera was invented around 1890, and it was 1915 before you had films that really consolidated all of the things that we take for granted now, like uh, points of view shots and cuts and pans and fades. Just these things that seem really obvious now all had to be invented. Have we mastered the web, or are there mysteries left behind it? What is still left to emerge? Well, I think it is still very much emerging, but there are certain characteristics that are, you know, fairly obvious. Uh, uh, you know, one, it's uh, pretty nonlinear, um, it, or at least it encourages nonlinear storytelling. Um, it's also obviously very participatory. Uh, it, it encourages um, people to not just be passive consumers the way television and, and even movies did, but to you know sort of leap in in different ways and, and, and maybe even become part of the story. So people are constantly analyzing the dynamic between the brand and the consumer or the advertiser and the consumer. Is it about who's controlling the content? Does control matter? And if so, who's in control? No, I think that's a great question. I mean, the question of control, uh, especially for you know advertisers and marketers, is really critical, and it's one of the things that the internet really throws into question. Because if if people are you know participating in the storytelling process, then that kind of implies that the author isn't really in control in the way that um, you know we're we're used to this thing uh, being. Um, and I think that's uh, just something that uh, marketers have to, you know, A, live with, and B, learn how to leverage. What's different now is it's, it's become really obvious um, through social media, Twitter, Facebook, and so forth, that uh, you know, people have their own opinions, and that's going to be what drives the brand perception more than anything else. And what happens to stories when they collide with these recreations, uh, specifically gaming? Well, I think that's a fascinating question. I mean, the whole area of games and stories colliding. Uh, is really something that people are just starting to figure out. It's like there are different ways of modeling the world, you know, of creating a model uh, and um, and and seeing how things happen when you when you do that. And I thought that was uh, that was really fascinating to identify that you know sort of common ground. In a practical sense, uh, you know, I think we're still very much groping our way. There's this whole uh, idea of gamification, which basically means uh, of course, uh, applying you know simple, relatively simple game mechanics to stories or other kinds of interactions. There's um, one very recent example is uh, a book that was published in the UK a couple of months ago called Capital by John Lanchester, and um, the publisher Faber and Faber worked with Matt Locke, who has a, a, a startup called Story Things, to create an online experience that. Uh, uh, really makes it easy for people to imagine themselves in the situation of characters in the in the book, and uh, I, I think I think that's just one example of the kind of thing that's possible now. To switch gears a little bit, uh, you came to New York City and started covering the punk scene in the 1970s for right. the Village Voice. What was that like? I mean, do you see any similarities, huge differences between the cultural movements that were going on and what you were covering? I was. Um, I was I was really turned on by that, you know, partly by the music, of course. I mean, mainly by the music, but also by the sort of you know do-it-yourself spirit of the of the musicians. And it was great to see uh, you know people going back to the roots and just you know like four chords and uh, and a bad attitude and in a nasty little club somewhere. It was great. Uh, <laughs> so um, what you're seeing now is a lot of people uh, you know sort of going at the internet in you know with a same kind of attitude. As the content becomes more entertainment related and advertisers are less, less self-conscious about selling, how will we measure if this is actually effective? 
We're moving beyond, uh, you know, just sort of raw ratings for uh, things like television shows. And uh, it's possible, it's becoming possible to measure the depth of engagement as, as you know, as much as the, uh, or as well as the breadth of engagement. So it's not just a question of, you know, how many people are watching a given show on any given, uh, you know, time uh, when it's broadcast, but but how deeply they're engaging with it, how much they care about it, um, and uh, and you know by extension, you know how much do they care about uh, the brands that, uh, in one way or another, are you know bringing it to them. It's one of those things that's uh, that, that's part of the emerging grammar of storytelling that has to be figured out.